Hey, welcome to Master Math. I'm the Math Mutt, and I'm here to remind you of a couple of things that'll help you get more out of these Master Math lessons. Be sure you know where your pause button, your forward button, and your reverse button is. If you find you're losing concentration, hit your pause button and take a break. If I go over something and you don't understand it, hit your back button and go back and listen to that section again. And when you come to a you try it problem, hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Now let's learn some math. Today we're going to talk about direct variation. And direct variation just means you've got an expression where the variables grow proportionately, or the size of the variables changes in a direct fashion. Well, let's go through an, exp uh, an example, and I think you'll understand this. Carla is walking at three miles per hour. How far has she gone after one hour? Well, that's easy. Her distance equals her speed, three miles per hour, times the amount of time she's walking. And three miles per hour times one hour equals three miles. Well, I could turn that into an algebraic expression if I put in some variables for these big words. So we're going to put in a D for distance and a T for the amount of time that she walks. And then the expression becomes distance, D, equals the constant, which is 3 miles per hour, times the amount of hours that she walked. Now, here's another expression, y equals kx. And it's very similar to this expression. I've got a variable, and it equals a constant. And 3 is a constant. 3 is always going to be 3 in this expression. It never changes. It's constant. Times another variable y equals a constant times x. And that is the formula for a direct variation. If you can reduce any equation to a format that looks like that, a variable equals a constant times a variable, it's expressing a direct variation. Let's look at another example. Gas costs 385 per gallon. Write a formula for how much you'll spend on gas for any volume of gas. Well, we need some variables, so we're going to call T the total amount you're spending on gas, and G is going to be the gallons of gas that you buy. And then the formula is the total amount you spend equals 385 times the number of gallons that you buy. And hopefully you can see that that expression is, is, is in that format. A variable equals a constant times another variable. So this is a direct variation. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Because in this case, we've got an unchanging constant, 3 miles per hour. And the more hours we walk, the greater distance we're going to go. And the distance is going to increase proportionately to the number of hours we walk. And in this case, the more gas we buy at 385 a gallon, the more gallons we buy, the higher the total price we're going to spend is. So, from the last problem, the Carla walking problem, we figured out that the equation was D equals 3T. And that was in the format of a direct variation of variable Y equals a constant times a variable X. And we talked about the fact that that constant can't equal zero. K has to be a number other than zero. Okay. Well, let's find another way to see if this is a direct variation. Let's create a chart that shows us the amount of distance traveled at various times. After one hour, we put a one in the T there, and three times one equals three, so we've traveled a distance of three miles. After four hours, we substitute four for t. I've got three times four equals twelve. Twelve miles. So we could create this chart that showed at any distance or at any amount of time walked how far we walked. And then we could create a graph that represented the values on this chart. For instance, one hour equals three miles. I go an x of one 
and a Y of 3, and I put a dot there. And then I go 2 hours, 6 miles. And I go 3 hours and 9 miles. Well, if I create a line that runs through those points, it's going to look just like that orange line. And there's two things about that orange line that are characteristic of direct variations. Number one, it's a straight line. And all direct variations are represented by straight lines on a graph. And number two, it goes through the origin. It goes right smack dab through where x and y axis is cross. So all direct variations are represented graphically by a straight line that goes through the origin. I like this video. This is a cool one. I'm going to explain the problem while you watch this jet take off. It's pretty neat. The airplane takes off from Podunk where the elevation is 4,000 feet above sea level. The plane gains altitude at a rate of climb of 2,000 feet per minute. How far above sea level is the plane after one minute? Well, I think we can figure that out. The elevation after one minute is going to be 2,000 feet times one minute Plus, it's starting at 4,000 feet above sea level because the city is well above sea level. So we're going to have to add 4,000 there. So the elevation equals 2,000 T plus 4,000. Is that an expression of a direct variation? Well, I don't think so. Because if you remember, a direct variation had to be in the format y equals a constant times x. Well, we've got that there. y, a variable, equals a constant times x. But it doesn't say anything about plus 4,000. And in this case, we've got to add 4,000 because we're starting at 4,000 feet above sea level. So this is not a direct variation. y equals a constant x plus 4,000. So it's not a direct variation. And if we graph this, or if we chart this, we can come up with various elevations at various times. And when we create a graph of that, we're going to see two things. Number one, it is a straight line. And that that's good, because all uh, direct variations are represented by straight lines. But it doesn't go through the origin. It crosses the y-axis at 4,000 feet. Why does it cross at 4,000 feet? Because we're starting at 4,000 feet because the city's at 4,000 feet above sea level. And in our equation, we've got this plus 4,000 feet. So that prevents the line from going through the origin. So this is not a direct variation. Do these ordered pairs represent a direct variation? 1, 2, 2, 4, and 4, 8. Well, for them to be a direct variation, we'd have to put them in a format like this expression right here, y equals kx. That's our basic format for a direct variation. So the question we got to ask ourselves is, is there a number k, a constant value k, that we can multiply each of those x's by and get the corresponding y? Is there a number I can multiply 1 by and get 2? And will that same number, when multiplied by 2, get me 4? And will that same k, when multiplied by 4, get me 8? Well, let's kind of chart this out and see if we can figure it out. In my first order pair, my x value is 1. And I need to get a value of 2 for y. Well, what can I multiply 1 by to get 2? Well, I can multiply... 1 by 2, and I'll get 2. 2 times x, 2 times 1 equals 2. So it works for that one. How about for the second one? I've got an x value of 2. If I multiply, if I use the same formula and multiply that 2 by 2, do I get 4? I sure do. So that works out. How about for the third ordered pair? Yep, that works out too. So it looks like a direct variation to me. And when I graph it, I get a straight line that goes through the origin. 
Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. There are four cups, and we'll call cup C, per quart, and we'll call quart Q, of liquid. Could this be expressed as an equation, and would it describe a direct variation? Well, sure. Let's put this down in algebra. A quart equals four cups. That's what it says up there. One quart equals four cups. Now, does that look like the formula for direct variation? Well, I think so, because the formula for a direct variation had to be in this format. Y equals a constant times uh, X. A variable, y or q, equals a constant, which in this case is 4, times a variable x, which in this case is c. So it looks like a direct variation. But let's create a chart and figure this out. If I've got 1 quart, I've got 4 cups. 1 quart, 4 cups. If I've got 2 quarts, I've got a 2 here in front of the quart, I've got to put a 2 over here, and it's 8 cups. If I've got 3 quarts, it's 12 cups. Now let's graph this, which I did right here. And I've got cups on the x-axis and quarts on the y-axis. So for 4 cups, I've got 1 quart. For 8 cups, I've got 2 quarts. Now I draw a line through those dots that represent the, the points on our chart, and I get a straight line and it goes through the origin. So, Q equals 4C is a direct variation. Does this graph show a direct variation? Well, yeah, that's pretty easy. It does because it's a straight line and it goes through the origin. So that graph does represent a, a direct variation. Now let's take this a little bit further and see if we can create an equation for it. I've got a couple of points on that line, and one is 2, 4, and the other is 4, 8. Now can we see a relationship there with how x and y vary? Remember the formula is y equals some constant times x. Is there some constant I can multiply 2 by to get 4? Well sure, I can multiply 2 by 2 and get 4. Will that constant work on this point? If I multiply that x value by 2, do I get that y value? Yeah, 2 times 4 equals 8. So I could express that as, the, as an, uh, an algebraic expression, y equals 2x. And that's in the format of a direct variation, y equals kx. Does this graph show a direct variation? No, I don't think so. Number one, it doesn't go through the origin. The lines or the graphing of a direct variation has to go through the origin, and this just avoids the origin. And secondly, it's not a straight line. It curves. And all direct variations are straight lines. Well, that's our lesson on direct variation. Now go to www.mastermath.info and download the direct variation worksheet and practice what you've been learning. Then go back to mastermath.info and take the quiz on direct variation. And be sure to come back and see us again real soon.